are, you know what a disaster they are to get started. So if you're watching this after the fact, skip ahead like three or four minutes while I get this thing set up. I, it's always a disaster. I gotta figure out how to flip the screen here. So hopefully you can hear me okay. All right. Please be patient with me while I get my camera set up. I am just walking in the door from work and it just takes me a minute to get going. So if you're in the chat, let me know if you can hear me and uh, tell me where you're from. It's always nice to see who's popping in here around the world, around the country. And I know the camera angle is probably off right now, but I'm just getting to where I can log into my channel. All right, let me get my thing set. Okay, let me get this sorted out. Sorry guys, it's always a freaking disaster. Does that work? Let's get that light turned down a little bit. Uh, welcome to the live stream, you guys. Very happy to have you here. Uh, we are gonna be talking about Let's see if I can get this. Sorry, just bear with me while I get the camera set up. If you're watching this after the fact, skip ahead to like the three or four or five minute mark. Uh, everyone else, thanks for being patient with me. I just walked in the door from work. I was hustling to get this, this thing done on time. Hope everyone's doing well. You are in Draper, Utah with uh, Jason Dahl. That's my name here on MTV Yum Yum. And uh, excited to talk short travel 29ers with you today. I would imagine that's where most of the topic stays this evening. And I'm really going to try to stay for the, at least the first little bit on the Rocky Mountain element, answer questions from the video we posted on Sunday. And uh, yeah, I always love to see where people are from. Even though I might not say your name or comment on where you're from right now, I always go back and read the chat because uh, I'm just always interested to hear where everybody's from. Uh, so welcome everyone. We got bike some here. Welcome. All right. JD in Colorado, Dell in Scottsdale, Arizona. You guys just had Sedona Fest down in Arizona. I'd like to head out to Sedona Fest at some point. Uh, maybe I think they have one in the fall, don't they? Maybe I'll head out in the fall or wait till next year. Um, MTB swag up in Idaho. Uh, nice, nice to have you here. Um, Let's see here. We're just gonna let a few more people trickle in here. Uh, Bill in St. Louis, uh, welcome. Uh, he's our moderator tonight, so thanks to Bill for always kind of hanging out with us here and keeping the chat kind of nice and PG. Uh, Rocky Mountain Element, were any of you surprised that I, that I swapped out the, the Ibis Ripley? I mean, for those of you who are new to the channel or watching this after the fact, I've been riding an Ibis Ripley, which is a 120 mil travel rear uh, DW link suspension with a 130 or 140 millimeter Fox 34 fork. That's kind of how I've been riding it for the last three seasons, uh, almost three years on that bike. That's the longest I've been on a bike in a long time, uh, you know, on just one, one bike for, for that many seasons. So, uh, I, man, I was just on the hunt, man. I was looking and looking and looking all over for a good replacement for that Ripley. And I never found one. And, um, before we talk too much about the Rocky Mountain Element, the reason why it was such a struggle to, rep uh, to replace the Ibis Ripley was because it kind of is the Goldilocks of short travel bikes. It kind of, it's a really zippy and sporty, um, and I, I know I have all these words that I'm describing on how the bike handles, and, and so when I say sporty, you might think, man, what is Jason talking about here? Um, so I'll try to do my best to describe what the Ripley did so well, and, and that is that it rode slower speeds and really tight trails really well, really easy to ride. It was still a lot of fun. It was very rewarding to ride on those types of trails. Um, bikes that were less rewarding that are short travel bikes were um, like the uh, the Spur, for example, the Transition Spur. Um, and so the Ripley could also handle higher speeds almost as well as, as these kind of mid-travel 29er bikes, right? 
And so this Ripley kind of did all these things so well and it climbs incredibly well. So um, that's a very short version of why the Ripley was so difficult for me to replace. Um, one of the things that I love about a bike when I get on it, and I've, if you watch all my videos, uh, you know, I always say I'm five foot eight. And so I ride a medium, a medium sized bike most of the time. And, uh, you know, I, I like to get on a bike that feels really easy going, that it's easy to ride. Um, and so uh, for me, the, the Ibis Ripley was that. It was just very easy to ride. Anyone could probably get on that bike and be really easy to ride. Bikes that are more demanding or more difficult to ride would be in that short travel category. Probably the Transition Spur It's a pretty demanding bike. You bump up to the 130 millimeters of travel and you get into the Yeti SB130. That bike is also a little bit more demanding. It, um, it, it kind of shines a light on your mistakes a little bit more. Um, and so the Ripley is just really easy. So fast forward to uh, November of 2021, just a few months ago, and I first got my first opportunity to ride the Rocky Mountain Element, the, the newest model, right? And that thing, right out the gate was just super easy to ride, very uh, natural uh, and, and easy riding position. Uh, the geometry is excellent on this Rocky Mountain element. And uh, it's also very balanced. You know, you don't have to load up the front a whole lot. Um, it doesn't really care where you're out on the bike. It just still feels really good everywhere. So that speaks to me. That's, that's kind of what I'm looking for in a bike. Um, not a bike that I have to throttle like hard all the time and just really be super focused. So that's where the, that's where the Rocky Mountain Element comes in. Uh, I have a video coming out soon um, that will be the real, I don't know what the title is going to be just yet, but it will be something along the lines of like the real reason why I sold my Ibis Ripley. And, and for those of you in the chat here, you'll, you'll get to hear it here first. And the real reason is, is i I bought, I, this is kind of a, I don't want to suck the air out of the room here and just be like, wah, wah. But uh, the real reason I sold the, uh, the Ibis Ripley was sitting right over here and don't get sick here, but that's the real reason. That is my new Ibis XE, which is a short travel, you know, 100 mil in the rear, 120 in the front. Uh, that is uh, my new Ibis XE. Okay, so that's the real reason why I've sold the Ripley. Um, did I just call the Ibis XE the Ripley? If I did, I meant Ibis XE. Uh, in any case, um, I, okay, I know we're supposed to talk about the Rocky Mountain Element, and I apologize to anyone who came to this chat to hear just about the Element, but the Element is only in my lineup because I replaced the Ripley with an XC. And I was always trying to make my Ibis Ripley as lightweight and fast rolling and efficient as possible. You know, I had my Ripley down to 24 pounds and just was really treating it more like a cross country bike than a trail bike really. And so uh, I've now got this Ibis XC, which weighs, I'm embarrassed to even say, but it's 22 pounds. It's like, it's just stupid. So it's a 22 pound cross country bike that just, it's a rocket ship, you guys. In fact, I have a race on Saturday of this week. I've been training all winter. I have a race this Saturday. It's a 50 mile race down in the deserts of St. George. And I'm gonna race it on that, that bike. And that bike is a rocket ship. So that bike kind of leaves me stranded on most of the trails I ride because it's a cross country bike. So now that the Ripley's out, and I got the XC there, I now could go with something a little bit more fun. I mean, the, the Element has legs for a ton of different trails. Uh, where the Ripley would start to get a little skittish and sketchy and twitchy, the Element is still just full speed ahead. I mean, you, you start getting over 30 miles per hour on that bike and it still feels really composed, really stable has a super long wheelbase on the Rocky Mountain Element, and um, the geometry of the Rocky Mountain Element is so similar to like enduro bikes of like three and four years ago. Uh, 
that it just makes it this incredible, you know, uh, trail bike, you know, the elements of trail bike, but it's lightweight. Um, it climbs really, really well. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. So I, I had the Ripley in the lineup kind of like right here. And this is more cross country down this way. And this is more, you know, longer travel bike this way. And so I, I got rid of the Ripley and put in a cross country bike and an element. And so now I've just widened my gap a little bit more between the, the quiver of bikes. And that's the real reason why I sold my Ripley. Got the XC and got the element. So I traded the Ripley and got two new bikes. So I'm pretty excited about it. You know, I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited to spend more time on the Ibis XC. And that's the last I'm gonna talk about the XC for now. The bike is so freaking fast. And for those of you guys who train or race or have power meters, right now I weigh, you know, kind of 139 pounds to 140 pounds. For the last year, I've been sitting around 145 pounds, but in the last three months, I've been getting more focused, been working more on my uh, training. And so my, uh, my FTP right now is 263. If you don't know what that means, then don't even worry about it. But for you, you guys who train, my FTP is 263 watts and I weigh about 63 kilograms. So I'm sitting at like just over four watts per kilo right now, which for me is pretty dang good considering it's been winter uh, in Utah. And uh, I'm not gonna win any races with a four watts uh, uh, you know, per kilogram. You know, that's, uh, that, that doesn't work, but, um, but it'll be competitive. It would be fun. So uh, let's talk Rocky Mountain Element. Uh, also, I, I wish I could read the chat more, but I would, I'd love to know how many people called it. I've had a couple messages of people saying, I knew you were gonna get the Rocky Mountain Element. Uh, and that's the other thing. I just wanna say this one last thing. A lot of people think that if I sell a bike, like if I sell the Ripley, or I mean, I don't wanna make all your guys' ears bleed here, but. Uh, I sold the Trail 429. I know I'm breaking hearts all over the country right now. I sold my Trail 429, my pivot. And uh, it's not because I don't like it. And it's really not even that the element is better than the Trail 429, because frankly, it's not. The, the, the rear suspension on the, the pivot Trail 429 is second to none. I mean, honestly, if I could have the rear suspension of that pivot on my Rocky Mountain element, I would, I would pay that engineer right now to make that happen. Um, Cause it's, it's, look, there's no perfect bike, but um, the characteristics of the element fit my quiver of bikes right now better than the Pivot Trail 429. That's the only way I can explain it. So when I sell a bike, don't freak out and think like, oh man, uh, you know, Jason rides all these bikes and the fact that he sold that bike must mean there's some sort of deficiency with that bike or, or that this other bike that he now has is better in some way. It, it, it's better for me right now, the element is, because I also have my XC and, you know, I have other purposes when I sell a bike. A lot of times I sell a bike just because I need to, you know, free up some money to go buy a different bike that I have coming in, in a month or two. So, I still love the Trail 429. I would be happy with the Trail 429, probably. I could probably be happy with the Trail 429 as my only bike, even in Utah, except for maybe those handful, five, six, eight, eight days a year type of thing where I would want more travel. But um, in any case, uh, Rocky Mountain Element is a horse sleek suspension. You guys probably already know that. Um, it, is, it is probably the most um, confidence inspiring short travel bike I've ever ridden. I have so much traction that I am just launching this thing into corners, uh, with, with so much confidence and, and no fear of not having traction. It's incredible. And, and part of the reason why is I've got that rebound, um, you know, turned down lower than, than I, than I have on my other bikes and it still feels poppy enough and responsive enough and quick enough in the rebound setting, right? But it just has so much traction. It took a minute to get there. In fact, I am posting, nobody's gonna watch this stupid video I'm posting. I'll probably just post it tomorrow. I edited it like a week ago. But 
I actually filmed on a GoPro my first ride on the Rocky Mountain Element because it was starting to snow back in late November, or like the first week of December when I first rode the Rocky Mountain Element. And I thought there's no way I'm gonna have time to like do a full review. And so I thought I'm just gonna film the whole ride. Like I only turned the, the computer or the, uh, the GoPro off a handful of times, just in an effort to conserve the battery, right? And so I'm gonna publish probably just tomorrow or tonight when I get done with this live stream, I'm gonna publish, it's like a 45 or 50 minute video, which is so stupid, no one's gonna watch it. But if you're on a trainer, yeah, that's the only person that's gonna watch this. Is someone who's like on a spin bike or a trainer and just wants to pop the earbuds in and watch it on your phone type of thing. Uh, yeah, there you go. But you'll get my first experience on the Rocky Mountain Element and you'll get to see me kind of fuss around with the suspension a little bit, trying to find more traction, trying to find a more responsive, uh, poppy, playful bike. Ultimately, I ended up replacing the volume spacer in that DPS rear shock um, from a 0.2 size spacer to a 0.4. And then lowering the PSI, and that ended up making all the difference for me. Um, a lot of people have asked me what my settings are. I'm seven clicks from full fast on the DPS shock, and I have like 165 or 170 PSI in there, and I weigh 140 pounds. Um, so those are the bike settings. Oh, and then I run a pike. Oh, and the other thing I didn't tell you in the, uh, the actual review video is that I'm riding the pike at 140 millimeters of suspension, so it's a little taller. And I'm riding it in the ride three setting on that ride four um, little chip that you can flip around. That chip adjusts the geometry almost a full degree or like 0.8 of a degree from 65 degrees up to in the slackest head angle, 65, to the steepest head angle of 65.8. Again, my purpose of running the 140 fork on there was that I've got that Ibis XC for like all of the more tame trails, uh, you know, the really buffed kind of chill blue trails, right? And so I wanted to create um, a little bit more separation between the two bikes. In an effort to do so, I put a pike on there and ran it at 140 in the neutral position. Okay, so if I had a 130 millimeter fork in the neutral position, I would be at like 65.5 degree head tube angle. I would imagine with the extra 10 millimeters, I probably slackened it out to almost 65 degree head tube angle, which I'm pretty okay with. I like that. Uh, let's hop in the chat and see if there's a question. Dustin Johnson with the 499 super chat. Thank you for the support. Uh, thank you, I just gotta say real quick, thank you to viewers like you to watch this channel that support me. Um, otherwise I'd just upload these ridiculous videos and nobody would watch them and uh, I really appreciate it. So if you're in the chat right now, we've got over 100 people in here right now, just hit the like button, that helps a lot. It lets other people who are on Google right now or in YouTube right now know that uh, Jason's live and they wanna come and hang out with us. And uh, so Dustin says, Rocky Mountain Element, Pivot 429, all right, I haven't even read the rest of his comment here, and I already know he's probably gonna give me a bunch of crap. Uh, Rocky Mountain Element, Pivot 429, uh, Trail 429, uh, Ibis Ripley, you have to climb one, descend one, and keep one. You can't pick the same bike twice. Oh, okay, that's a kind of a fun question. You can't pick the same bike twice. You have to climb one, descend one, and keep one. Wow, okay, well, uh, for technical climbing, there's no question the Pivot Trail 429. I think it outclimbs every bike in the category in like a technical terrain. Uh-oh, did we just freeze up? I really hope we didn't lose everyone here. Can you guys still see me? My computer's telling me that... You guys still with me here? Wow, okay, well, uh, for technical climbing, ah, there's no question. I wonder if my internet just I think it every crapped the bed. Like oh, okay, I'm good? Okay, I'll turn my computer off. I was worried my internet crapped the bed there for a minute, and, uh, okay, sorry, false alarm. My computer was all frozen for a second. All right, so I don't think the Trail 429 can be beat in the technical climbing. Um, if I had to pick 
Okay, one for climbing, technical climbing, Pivot Trail 429, every other climbing, Ibis Ripley. And so most of my climbing is not technical. So for climbing, Ibis Ripley, there, done. Uh, descending on one, whoo, element for sure. Rocky Mountain element. Dude, <laughs> the amount of traction this bike has. And like, it's not as damp and deep feeling as the Trail 429. It doesn't give you that really like, damp and controlled fill, but dude, the geometry makes up for whatever that horse link is lacking. So, so horse link, slight deficit, um, you know, it, it, you know, it's, it's, it's lacking compared to the, the DW link, but dude, the geometry of the bike is just bonkers. It's so good. It's really, really good guys. Descending element. If I could only keep one, if I could only keep one out of those three bikes, I would keep the Ibis Ripley. Sorry, I know I'm the most boring guy in the world. I'd keep the Ibis Ripley. It just does everything better than any other bike, I think. But the Trail Forts, <laughs> they're all good. I, I can't pick one. Okay, I gotta move on. Dustin, that's a great question. You stumped me. I think I keep the Ripley. All right. Um, let's see here. There was a few things. Okay. Okay. I, people who are tuning in just about the Rocky Mount element, I, there's a couple things I need to say about the review I did. Okay. Real quick. Number one is I should have spent more time comparing it to the transition spur because the geometry is pretty similar. They're both like a horse link style bike, right? Similar suspension style. I think the reason why I didn't is because the spur for me was always a kind of stiff, kind of rigidy type feeling bike a little bit. I, I thought it had amazing geometry when it came out. It was kind of ahead of its time in my, in my opinion. Um, I want to say it's just a little bit steeper angles than the Rocky Mountain Element. It's probably not quite as long as the Rocky Mountain Element because that bike is ridiculous for a 120 mil travel bike, right? But the spur, I want to say it's like 66 degree head tube angle and 76 degree seat tube angle. I love those numbers. Um, the bike for me though, uh, where it's lacking is, is it's a demanding bike. It, it kind of gets pinged offline a little bit. Um, and it's hard to say that because compared to the Ripley, it really doesn't. It, it feels probably more stable than the Ripley. And it's been a while since I've ridden the spur, honestly. But um, the redeeming characteristics of the trail, of the, uh, the transition spur is, you know, what you get for your money, a lightweight bike with decent components in a name brand bike like Transition, you know? I think it's like a $6,500 bike or something with full X01 and it weighs like 25 and a half pounds. It's, it's pretty ridiculous value, but it just lacks soul. It lacks feeling and, and for me. And it's also a pretty demanding bike. It blows corners like crazy. Like it doesn't have the quick turn in that this element has. And you guys might be thinking, well, on paper, they look really similar. And I, I'd have to pull them up here and look at them like side by side, right? Um, you know, I would imagine they're probably pretty similar on paper, but at the end of the day, the Rocky Mountain element has way more traction in my experience. And I rode the transition for maybe not an entire week, but certainly three or four days. Cause Tyler and I filmed at least uh, we filmed at least two days and we had that bike for close to a week. I'll bet we rode that bike three or four days. And I think Tyler even had it at his, his house a couple days. So we, we definitely got enough time on the spur. Sometimes I only get, uh, you know, like two rides on a bike or something. So in any case, um, the other bike that I regret not talking a little bit more about, and we'll talk about it here, is the new Stump Jumper. Um, and, and I think the new stump jumper because it has 130 millimeters of travel in the rear. It just kind of escaped my mind a little bit when I was thinking about these short travel bikes, which is so stupid because the uh, evil um, following and the Santa Cruz uh, tall boy, I would say are maybe even, you know, potentially more capable or at least deeper feeling and, and have a more bottomless suspension than even the specialized stump jumper with 130 millimeters with that new flex stay suspension. I mean, it's, is it a horse link suspension? I don't think it is anymore. It's more like a single pivot 
flex, pivot, whatever the, whatever Specialized is doing with their new stump jumper, it um, has this real lively feeling. It doesn't have that deep feeling that you get from like, like I said, the, uh, the Santa Cruz or the Evil. So um, I should have probably talked more about that bike. That and the fact that I'll bet the geometry is pretty similar between the new stump jumper and this element. So, um, and I really liked the new stump jumper a lot. Um, if it didn't have a brand that started with an S, I, I would probably like it even more. I just, I don't know, maybe that sounds terrible. Um, Jackus Van Staden, thank you for the 1399 Canadian super chat. I really appreciate that. Hi, Jason, ordered a C50 delivered and uh, delivering the end of March. Okay, congratulations. And the C50 is the one to get. That's a lot of componentry and a lot of bike for the money. I think it's like a $4,800 bike. Um, except for the wheels, what changes to the stock build would you recommend? Do you have any buyer's remorse? None. Zero buyer remorse. I love the element. And of course, that doesn't mean you necessarily will. You have to, I always tell people this. You have to consider your speed. Is your speed high or low? And numbers to, to pay attention to are like 13 miles per hour and like 25 miles per hour. Because those are the kind of the places, once you get over 25 miles per hour, often on the downhill, you start needing the bike and tires that kind of go mock chicken. Otherwise, things get super scary, super fast. Um, if you kind of stay in that below 25 miles an hour, but still above 13 miles per hour, well, you know, I think a 120, 130 mil travel bike is perfect. So any buyer's remorse? None. I love the element. It took me a minute to get the rear suspension dialed, and, it, you know, other people might might find that out for themselves as well. Um, do I still like the bike as much as day one? I like it more than, than day one. Um, except for wheels, what else, uh, what changes to the stock build would you recommend? I wouldn't change anything unless you want like the world's lightest bike that I, like I do, then I change everything because I want my bike to be 25 pounds because I'm nuts. But no, the C50 is a perfect build. Congratulations, ride it, enjoy it. Put some, I would call Chris at Saw Cycles and put some yum yum carbon wheels on there. That's what I would recommend because those wheels are lightweight. In fact, while we're on the topic of wheels, the wheels on my Ibis XE weighed 1,095 grams, just under 1,100 grams for 29er wheels with a 28 millimeter internal diameter width. That's insane. That's a crazy light wheel set. Uh, thank you for the super chat. Uh, let's get back in here. Uh, all right, and if I missed your comment, I apologize. I'm trying my best to, to, to kind of stay on top of this. Um, all right. Other things that I love about the element. Geometry, probably number one, the geometry. It's such a rad trail bike. If you're not gonna be like a racer guy, it's the type of bike that just says, let's go ride. The geometry is incredible. Dang it, my computer's frozen again. Can you guys still hear me? Restore chat. Man, what's going on with my computer tonight? Can you guys still hear me? Yes, okay, I don't know, something wrong with my computer, something wrong with my internet, maybe. Um, all right, let's see here. So other things about the element. I love the package. So that Carbon 50 model for $4,800, I, I think that's a deal, man, for an awesome bike that you really don't need to change anything on it. Just get on it and ride. Um, you know, I, I don't know that I would... If I were you guys, I don't know that I'd be selling my Pivot Trail 429 or my Ibis Ripley for it, unless your bike is totally clapped out, you got 3,000 miles on it, it's just time for a new bike, or time to throw a bunch of money at your bike with new suspension, new tires, new drivetrain, whatever. If your bike's all clapped out, then maybe sell it and try, you know, throw your leg over an element and try it. But for me, if it was my only, my one bike, I don't know that I'd sell my Ripley for it or 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 that I would necessarily sell my Trail Fort my Pivot Trail 429 for it. I only did it because A, I like to try different bikes, and so I always kind of want to rotate through my bikes. And then B, I got a little short travel 
tr short travel rocket ship over there in my Ibis uh, XE. So, you know, it made sense for me to do. Um, yeah, and I've been liking riding the Pike. If you guys remember, I put a Pike on my Pivot Trail 429, and I really liked it a lot. So that's kind of what I've been doing. Uh, Landon Carroll, thank you for the $10, the 999 Super Chat. Man, you guys are so generous tonight. Thank you. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, Jason, what would you say is the best carbon mid-travel trail bike for the money? I'm thinking the new Stumpy, but curious to hear what you think. Mid-travel carbon, I'm assuming you're talking 29er. Uh, what would you say is the best car? I, I think the best value right now is Ibis. Uh, if you guys if you guys price out Ibis's bikes, you can price out an Ibis Ripley or an Ibis Ripmo for like eight hundred dollars to a thousand dollars less than a lot of other similar brands that spec their bikes in a similar way. I want to say uh, Ibis Ripmo XT build is like sixty eight hundred bucks for an XT build with full factory suspension. That's pretty sweet. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that would be a pretty sick bike. The new uh, the Rocky Mountain Instinct is a mid-travel bike that just is awesome. Yeah, I think I'd be choosing maybe between those two bikes, I think. Yeah. Uh, the new Stumpy's cool. I don't know if I could do the Stumpy. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, maybe. What the heck? I like the Stump Jumper. I just... I probably need more time on that stump jumper to have like a definitive answer. Sorry if I wasn't as helpful as you had hoped. Uh, John with the $5 super chat. Thank you. So sad the stump jumper Q&A didn't save. Oh, I know. I don't know what happened, but the end of that, that's that, the, the, the specialized stump jumper Q&A was one of the most fun live streams we have ever had. And we had consistently like 250 people in the chat the whole time. It was so much fun, and I agree. I just, I messed it up at the end, and, and nobody's more disappointed than I am that we lost that chat. But anyway, between the Stumpy and the Trail 49, which did you like better, and which do you think is the more capable bike? Without a doubt, the Trail 429 climbs better, climbs technical terrain. It just feels more efficient climbing along the trail. Um, you're getting a more sophisticated suspension style. You're getting a better bike, you know, fit and finish, it's just a better bike. There's just no 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 question about it. Um, the geometry of the stump jumper is pretty rad. It kind of has similar geometry to what my element has, and that's pretty attractive. Um, but there's some things that happen when you get the geometry that the Rocky Mountain element has and that the stump jumper has compared to say the, the Pivot Trail 429. And maybe we talk about that real quick. The Trail 429 feels better at slower speeds. Under 18 miles per hour, it feels better than my Rocky Mountain element feels better than that stump jumper because the geometry is just made for a little bit slower handling, you know, slower speed trails. And if you're not on Strava or some other device, you know, Wahoo or Garmin that's tracking your rides where you can look at your average speed or at least look at the segments of downhill speed that you have or at least segments that you really enjoy even if they're not totally downhill and just try to capture there what your actual speeds are. I think people would be surprised now we kind of ride a little slower than we maybe think. When you're going no, 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 like down the trail, you're thinking, man, I'm just going so fast. But then you go back and you look at these Strava segments of downhill and you're like, oh, my average speed was 14 miles per hour. Well, at 14 miles per hour downhill speed, I would pick the Trail 429 over the Stump Jumper or the Rocky Mountain Element. It's just because it's 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 more lively. It's more fun. It's 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 a little faster steering the 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 wheelbase is a little shorter, you know? And so it kind of, these longer travel bikes or these more enduro geometry, it kind of dumbs down the trail. That's the idea, right? So you can ride higher speeds over chunkier terrain and just go fast, right? So it, now if, you, if your speeds are over 18 and certainly over 25 miles per hour, you know, maybe the, maybe the Stump Jumper or even the Stump Jumper Evo or a Rocky Mountain Instinct or an Ibis Ritmo would be more your speed. But then you got to lug those big bikes around on all those slow trails that we always end up riding all the time, right? You know, that's the, that's the debate. And that's what I try to convey as best I can in these live streams and, you know, in my videos a little bit. 
If I had time, I'd just make a video that talked all about this because I think this is the biggest factor when buying a new bike is to consider your speed and then your terrain. And then also other factors like what is your riding style and what are your expectations when you go out riding are you just trying to have a good time or are you trying to like, you know, get Strava KOMs or, or whatever. So uh, yeah, John, I hope that helps. Um, if I had to pick just between a Trail 429 and a Stump Jumper, I'd pick a Pivot and Trail 429 really every time. Yeah. Um, Another thing that I wish I would have mentioned in the Rocky Mountain Element video, guys, um, and if I had, if this was my full-time job and I had more time to really, you know, take more time for discovery, like if I had 40 hours in a week to, to produce one video, I would have, you know, 10 or 15 hours of just discovery and research. Um, and, and, and I would be making better notes about things that I want to talk about, and then I would go and produce or, or record the film you know, film myself talking about this bike, you know, yakking about it. And so now as time's gone on, I, and that's why I like to do live streams from time to time is because I've, I have more time to like, bleh, get all this content out of my face and, and, and to you guys, right? And so what I wish I would have said in the, in the uh, element video, that, I mean, there's lots of things that I missed, but I wish I would have talked about the actual frame, the, the frame details. The frame on this Rocky Mountain Element is so thin and slender and so cool looking, very different than other bikes that I've seen. And I wish I would have mentioned that. Um, and I, I know you guys are probably thinking, well, who cares how thick the plastic carbon tubing is on the frame? But I, it's really cool, you know? And people who haven't seen a Rocky Mountain Element in person, the guy reviewing the bike probably should have mentioned that. So there you go, I'm mentioning it, it now, you know? So, uh, yeah, and there's other stuff too, obviously. Uh, I'm reading another comment here about Coco Joy, coconut water. Dude, I think they went out of business because I don't know where Coco Joy is. Yeah. Robert says, big powder day up in the Cottonwoods tomorrow. Are you going skiing? Man, I wish I was going skiing. I'm taking Friday off work to head down to St. George for my bike race, so I can't be taking work off tomorrow. But dude, I think tomorrow's gonna be a really good day skiing up in the mountains. And I wish I could make more skiing analogies when I talk about bikes. I could bring out like four or five skis right here and set them on the wall. And I could explain why each ski is so different and how kind of those same ideas and principles about different skis relate to these different bikes that we have. Anyway. I hope you guys are all doing great. I hope life's good for you. Um, God, man, we live in crazy times right now with with what's going on in the world. And, um, you know, I sometimes feel a little weird just talking about bikes on YouTube all the time because there's just so many more important things, but uh, you know, bikes are important too. Bikes is a great way to get out on the trail and clear your mind, clear your head, just kind of take care of yourself. Um, Alex says, what shirt is this? This is a shirt called, uh, it's a brand called Cool. I forget how it's spelled, it's spelled with a K though. Cool. I don't know. I like it. I've got like three of these things. I call it my work uniform for the winter because I wear like the same freaking clothes <laughs> every day. Like, well, I've got three of these shirts and then one other one. I just kind of rotate through them. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ross, I'm racing True Grit this weekend. Yeah. I'll be racing on my Ibis XC. Um, Brandon, yes. 1000%. I should definitely do Ski Yum Yum. How sick would that be? Also, I have been thinking and talking. Yeah, okay, JD, thanks for spelling for me. Cool is spelled K-U-H-L. There you go. Um, I have been talking more seriously in the last two months about doing a Yum Yum bike destination group ride. It would cost money because I would hire a guide like a real guide for the trails and I would be there as well and I ride a lot of the trails and a real bike um, coach, uh, a mountain bike coach. So you guys could come, maybe you guys have heard of Chasing Epic or Western Spirits or these other organizations. My buddy Luke has, uh, he and his family has a couple times now taken these surfing trips to Costa Rica 
and they're there for a week. They just stay all in the same house with this big group and all their meals are taken care of. They've got like yoga planned and uh, like massage one day and they're there for a week. And then they have surf coaching every day. They have coaching every day. They, hit, they go out and they have two surf sessions every day. And your coach films you, talks about your how you're doing and stuff. Anyway, I, I thought, man, how cool would that be for you guys to come out and you guys could, could ride here with me. We all get a house, it'd be a huge party. And it would be really, it'd just be a really neat experience, I think. I think a lot of people would really like it. Um, you know, I have this idea in my head, and, and this is probably where the topic starts to like, people start to check out a little bit, be like, what's the yum yum guy talking about here? But it'd be really cool to be with a bunch of dudes or, or if, if girls ended up showing up, if you brought your wife's or girlfriends, or maybe you're a woman who's watching this now, I don't, I don't know. Um, but a bunch of people get together for a weekend and just create this awesome experience where we motivate each other to be better humans, better people, better fathers, better husbands, and have a killer, like just total kick ass four days of just empowering, riding some killer trails, eating some dang good food, and just having a good time together and just stay on the same house. I, th I think we built some awesome memories. I think it'd be really cool. It's something that I've wanted to do. I've opened up about this a few times in the past on live streams and I've got like uh, 43 emails from people saying, yes, I'm very interested. I don't know how much it would cost. You know, it might cost for the coaching and the guiding and the house and, the, and everything. Um, it, you, know, you know, it might cost $2,000 or, or, or maybe a little more than that, maybe, maybe $2,200 or $2,400. I'm not sure exactly what it would cost. But man, if you want to, and I've, I've paid for a guide to go skiing before. And I, I've skied at Snowbird up Little Cotton Canyon for over 30 years. And I still have gone, and, and I'm telling you guys, when you go with a guy who knows the trail, knows the terrain, it is just epic. It's insane. And we'd be just with a, such a rad you know, group. It would be really cool. So if you're interested, email me at mtbyumyum at gmail.com. I'll put you on the list and hey, I don't know, maybe it never happens. That's not the type of af affirmation or declaration I should be making because I wanna I wanna declare positive things right to the world, to the universe. It will happen. I'd like to see it happen this year. I think that would be pretty rad. Um, all right, let's see here. Scott, yeah, you don't sign up anywhere. Just send me an email and then as I start to get more serious about this, I will start to generate uh, an email list that I'll blast out to everyone, say, okay, it's go time. This is how much it costs. This is where we're staying. You get your butt here to Utah. I'll take care of all everything else, the rides, the transportation, all that kind of stuff. Um, Matt Dickey, what a great question. How did you get your name Yum Yum? A lot of people don't know that. Actually, I'll bet you someone in the chat knows because I think I've talked about it before. The name Yum Yum came from back in the day when I used to be more serious about road biking and I'd go on these epic hard rides or do some races and you just smash each other. I mean, look, real quick, again, we're getting all sentimental or something today. I don't know what's going on, but when you ride with a group of guys, especially on road bikes, because on road bikes, it's such a group effort to get out of the wind and you draft off each other and you hop in these slip streams and you, <coughs> you funnel through the, uh, the lineup in the wind and you take your turn out front on the wind and then you pull back and hop back in the slip stream of somebody else in front of you and you just really work for each other. You go do these big long rides. There's this ride that goes from, from Utah to, to Wyoming from a town called Logan, Utah, all the way 202 miles to Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And it ends up being a really long day and, and um, it's in September and you train for it all year. In any case, you go out and you just kill yourself training for these rides. And some rides I do 125 miles and 12,000 vertical feet of climbing. I don't know what that is in meters. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, so if you're not in the States, I don't know. But anyway, uh, what I'm getting at is you go out with these guys and you work for each other. And sometimes you get sick, you get cramps in your legs, or you get, uh, you know, you, you bonk, you know, you, 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 uh, you get so hungry or just so fatigued that you bonk and you kind of are seeing stars and you got someone there pushing behind you, or maybe that's the day that one of your buddies is sick and you're pushing them and you just work for each other. And 
It sounds crazy. For those of you who've never done it before, you end up forming a pretty tight bond with these people that you ride with. You're just working for each other and helping each other. And it's really a neat experience. And that happens a little bit in the mountain bike community as well. Uh, in any case, you're on a 120 mile ride, 130 mile ride or whatever, and you did 10,000 feet of climbing or more. And you finally get to the top of Guardsman's Pass up Big Cottonwood Canyon. You're just turning over a slow 65 RPM cadence and you're getting up the hill and you get to the top and you're like, oh shit, man, I am done. I am cooked. My legs are cooked. And someone says, yum, yum. Like, kind of sarcastic, like that was really good, but it was really freaking heavy. <laughs> That's where I got the name Yum Yum. People road biking would sometimes say Yum Yum, like, mm, that was good, but it was also freaking hell. And so to me, Yum Yum is when you're just suffering. And it doesn't have to be 125 miles in 10 or 12,000 vertical feet or 200 miles in, in a, a Lodija race. It doesn't have to be 50 miles this weekend down at True Grit uh, on my mountain bike, 50 miles and, and uh, 5,800 vertical feet of climbing. It could be your first ride. It could be a 19 mile ride or a four mile ride or whatever it is that gets you in the pain cave and you're feeling hurt, but you finished it anyway like a boss and yum yum, you did it. That's yum yum. <laughs> oh, kind of stupid, I know. Um, all right. Uh, like every live stream, I never end up talking very much about the actual, I mean, everyone tunes in to hear about the Rocky Mountain element and here I am just yakking about all sorts of stuff. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah, if there's anything else you guys want to talk about, I'd love to hang out for a little bit longer and talk, you know, maybe another 10 minutes or so. Um, also, you guys have probably noticed I have a lot more featured ads, like sponsored ads in my videos now. That's because those people are paying me actual real money uh, to talk about their product, whether it's the pros closet or the hip pack that you see me wear. Although I rode that hip pack for a long time before I ever was paid to offer it to, to my audience or to the viewer, right? And so I was always kind of back and forth on that. But the reality is guys, I've been doing this for quite a while here on YouTube. My channel has not taken off or blown up like most YouTuber guys has, but I still do a really, I spend a lot of time responding to comments, Instagram comments, YouTube comments, uh, emails, and I don't get compensated for any of that. So for them to, to compensate me in some way and to, for me to be able to monetize the channel, I know you guys have the burden of watching some more uh, ads and that's not gonna go away because it's been, a, it's been a lot, my motivation for doing this has gone up since being paid. That's just the way it is. It's not just about the money. I mean, I have a job, I don't need money. Like these, these super chats, I've gotten what, three or four super chats tonight, five bucks, 10 bucks, whatever. I used to feel kind of bad when people would do that, but the reality is, is it kind of, it's not about the money, it's about the validation. Like, okay, what I'm doing is worth doing. It makes sense to somebody out there because people keep on emailing me or asking me questions or supporting me by buying their bikes from Salt Cycles in Sandy, Utah, who fully supports me so that I can keep doing this channel. And the validation is nice to know that, okay, what I'm doing is useful. And with the pros closet, just so you guys know, the pros closet, like them, hate them. I don't know anything about them. I didn't even know who the pros closet was until they reached out to me and said, hey, we want to reach out to your audience in a meaningful way. So the pros closet, just so you guys know, through me has sold as of two weeks ago, has had 75 transactions and over $143,000 of product sold from the links that I provided my videos. That blew my mind. I couldn't even hardly freaking believe it. So trust me, they wanna keep on advertising to, to you guys or to whoever whoever's watching my channel, right? I had no idea that that many people, that a, that a business could benefit from this channel in that way. Paying me to talk about the pros closet. I don't talk that much about it, but 
My experience is they ship me a bike, I ride it, it's super easy process. Outside of that, I didn't, I didn't even know who they were until I connected with them. So that's it. Like them, hate them, doesn't make a difference to me. At least people are buying bikes from them and those people seem to be happy, otherwise the business wouldn't exist, right? Hey, welcome home. Um, anyway, uh, let's see here. Uh, let's talk about the Rocky Mountain Element because my wife just got home. We're probably gonna be uh, putting our kids to bed here in the next little bit. So five, 10 more minutes and I feel like I didn't talk enough about the Rocky Mountain Element as is. Uh, so, let's see here. Okay, it's good to read in the, in the comments here that the ads are just fine, pros, closet ads, fine. Fully understand, think it's fine. Good, thank you guys. And then the hip pack is so easy because I literally use the hip pack on 94 rides out of 100 rides. Like almost every ride I take a hip pack. And that hip pack's awesome. Oh, Mike Wood, Revel, Rascal, or Element? Easy, Element for me, Element. The Revel Rascal is kind of heavy. I mean, it just depends on what you want. You're gonna be able to go a lot faster downhill on the Revel. That rear suspension is insane. Revel has a really cool rear suspension. Oh, that's another great question. Matt D says alloy, aluminum frame element versus an Ibis Ripley AF. Wow, okay. I would say Ripley AF for sure. Yeah, in fact, Ripley AF over the alloy element. Excuse me. Yeah, 100%. The reason why is the suspension, the suspension system on that Ibis is just really, really awesome. And when you're only spending like $3,000 on an aluminum bike or whatever the price point is on those aluminum bikes, um, to get that to get that element or the uh, the DW link suspension versus the horse link on the element, I just think that's that's a better buy probably right there. Plus, Rocky Mountain's aluminum for some reason I don't know what it is. Is it super heavy? In fact, if you're gonna look at the the Ripley AF the aluminum element, I would also really strongly encourage you to look at the Giant Trance aluminum. There's something about Giant's aluminum. It's weird. Uh, Giant's aluminum bikes are only like a half of a pound or maybe three quarters of a pound heavier than their carbon bikes. Go figure. I think the, the Giant Trance is an excellent value for the guy that's in like that kind of $3,000 window. Um, man, lots of comments here asking about the, the Trail 429 versus the Element. <laughs> Man, it's, it's um, they're pretty different bikes. They're pretty different bikes. The, the, uh, the element does not feel as refined or as nice or robust as the Pivot Trail 429. Pivot, pivot bikes just, I, I just think they're second to none. Pivot bikes are just insane. They, they have this incredibly controlled, damp feeling, very glued to the ground feeling. They climb so well, it's just, it's mind blowing how, how well they, they climb, right? Um, yeah, Rick Washburn saying pivots are getting so freaking expensive. Yeah, they are, it's so stupid. Yeti, it seems like Yeti used to be the, the brand that was kind of expensive or if you wanted to say overpriced, you know, yeah, you kind of pointed at Ibis and said, ah, dentist, dentist bike there, you know? But Pivot has really kind of taken the, the throne of, you know, lots of money. <laughs> lots of money for that bike. Um, I don't know, you're never gonna hear me say too many bad things about a Pivot. They're just, I mean, you, you pay for it because they're the best. I think that they're, they're pretty incredible. In terms of value, man, Ibis is, is you know, you're like Element or or Pivot, uh, 12429, it's like, I don't know, I'd probably, I'd probably go Ripley. Still, Ibis Ripley. They're all really good though. And I know you guys hate hearing that. Yeah, Romero says, or R R Romer says the, the Pivot's, uh, Pivot's entry 
Entry level bikes are seven grand. Ah, it's insane. Oh, it's totally insane. Uh, Russell says, have any input on the Orbea Rise? You know what? The Pro's Closet sent me an email a couple days ago, said they're getting a bunch of brand new Orbea bikes in. I'm not sure if they're becoming like a new bike dealer for Orbea or what, but as soon as they get them on the ground, they're shipping them immediately to my house. So I think I'm gonna get the Orbea Rion and then the short travel one, the 120 mil travel. I, I don't remember the name of it. Maybe that's the Rise, I don't know. In any case, I should be riding some Orbea bikes here in the next two months is what it sounds like from the Pro's Closet. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think a Trail 429 makes more sense for more people out there. Now it, it's an expensive bike, you know, obviously it's an expensive bike, but the, the Pivot Trail 429 makes a lot of sense for a lot of people. That's the bike I've been recommending to most of my friends. And let's see here. Um, you know, uh, Mike Lang, Mike Weber both bought one, um, Alex, my buddy Alex Smith bought one. Uh, my buddy Luke is looking at one right now to replace his Ripley. He rides a Ripley with a Fox 36 up front because he's a bigger guy. He's 220 pounds, six foot five. And he's he's considering, although he's also considering the Yeti SB130 because it's so big for how, how for such a long reach for how big of a person he is. In any case, um, the Pivot is easy for me to recommend. The Ripley is incredibly easy for me to recommend for so many people, and I get it. You know, what you're not getting from, from my reviews is, and you always have to remember this, is that I, I'm kind of a smaller guy, and I have a pretty light riding style. Like, I don't smash real hard into stuff. I kind of pick my way, whereas some of the guys you see in my videos, I'm right on their tail, obviously. We're still moving at the same rate of speed down the trail. We just do it a little bit different way. You know, you know a couple of the people you see in my um, videos that just freaking mob the trail, just smashing stuff. It's really cool to watch, but I pick my way around a little bit more. Uh, okay, first second, that's a great question. A lot of great questions tonight in the chat, guys. Thanks, thanks a lot. And also, if you haven't hit the like button, please, uh, please do that. It helps a lot. Um, first second says element versus instinct. Which bike has the advantage on what types of train? Ah, uh, that's the other ball I dropped in the element review. I wish I would have talked more about, or at least some, about the instinct. I don't recall even mentioning the instinct in that whole video. In any case, the Rocky Mountain Instinct is a bike that builds up lightweight for 140 millimeters of travel. It's really playful. It doesn't feel nearly as big as other bikes with 140 millimeters of travel. And that's what I really like about the Instinct. The Instinct's a bike that would be on my list if I had to sell all my bikes and only have one bike. And I, I, I uh, the, yeah, the Instinct's a cool bike. Um, you'd have to put lightweight, fast rolling wheels on it and tires on it for me to, to enjoy it. But um, yeah. I would say the element is more similar to the instinct than, than most other bar bikes are. So, so the element is more similar to the instinct than the Ivis Ripley is to the Rip Mo. Does that make sense? Um, same thing with like the evil. The evil following is not as similar to the evil offering as the Rocky Mountain bikes are. Although the Trail 429, okay, so, so Rocky Mountain and Pivot have that in, in common, that the, the Element and the Trail 429 feel like bigger bikes, like they're closer to the speed and the terrain of their older brothers, which would be the Instinct and the Switchblade, the Pivot Switchblade. Yeah, so again, like I said, it comes down to rider speed, the terrain that you have, you know, those are the two biggest factors. So your speed and your terrain, and then next would be kind of your riding style and then your riding expectations, what you're hoping to get out of it. Um, how tall am I? I'm five foot eight. I don't know what that is in centimeters. I'm five foot eight. Um, and uh, I guess I have a little bit of news. I'm like 99% sure I'm replacing my Rocky Mountain Altitude with a pivot Firebird in a size small. 
the, pivot, the, 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 pivot, the new pivot Firebird in a size small is almost the exact same reach numbers as my current Rocky Mountain altitude. Uh, 448 millimeters reach on my altitude and 445 millimeters on a size small Pivot Firebird. I'm pretty sure that's the big bike I'm gonna ride this year. I've been looking at a couple different bikes. Um, you know, it's kind of hard to get a ride on some of these bigger bikes for some reason. I'm not, not finding them, but I rode the Pivot Firebird last fall in a size small, and I freaking loved it. I rode it for a couple days, and I think that's what I'm gonna go with. So, I will have one Pivot bike in the lineup. Well, it's not for sure, but I'm like 99% sure. Yeah. Salt Cycles here in Sandy, Utah, builds some of the most beautiful custom bikes. If you're looking for, you know, a Pivot or a Yeti or an Ibis, They've got them in stock. In fact, I was just up there today picking up some stuff for my race this weekend. Uh, just a few little things I needed for, for the race this weekend. And Chris told me they've got Yeti SB 115s, 130s, and 150s in stock. He'll make you an amazing deal on those bikes, and he has them ready to ship. Uh, he has, I think, every single size switchblade, Firebird, and Trail 429s in stock right now. He can ship them tomorrow. Um, Ibis, same thing. He has Ibis Ripley's in stock, except for not size medium. And he has Ibis Ripmo's in stock. So there you go. And he doesn't sell Rocky Mountain. <laughs> it's too bad he doesn't sell Rocky Mountain because that's the bike I ride. I could probably help him sell a whole bunch of Rocky Mountains, but he doesn't carry Rocky Mountain. And he doesn't carry Giant either, which I always recommend Giant Trances to people. Are you going to bed? Oh, how about a hug? Yeah. Mm, I love you. Love you too. Okay, good night. Looks like Marcy's putting the kids to bed without me tonight. Um, anyway, yeah, I wish Salt Cycles carried Rocky Mountain because, you know, that's the bike shop that supports me and that I love to use. But freak, man, if they don't carry the bike that I'm stoked on, it's like, you know, so he ended up building the bike for me. <laughs> He ended up putting all the parts on there. He put the pike on there and my dropper post and my handlebars and my stem and everything. He custom built those, those yum yum wheels. We've kind of just called it yum yum wheels because that's who he sells them all to. He sells like five or six pairs of those wheels a week to people because they're such a good deal. They're, they're not that expensive compared to all the other brand of wheels out there. They're lighter weight than any of their other brands. They're lighter weight than the Ibis wheels, lighter weight than Santa Cruz. Well, geez, everything's lighter weight than the Santa Cruz. Um, they're lighter weight than the Reynolds wheels, than, uh, did I say Envy yet? Lighter weight than Envy. Uh, there's no reason, if you're looking to shave a pound, pound and a half off your bike, bam. Salt Cycles can do it. I think those things retail for 1,600 bucks with i9 uh, Hydra hubs, and you can pick 25 mil, 28 mil, or 30 or 31 mil internal diameter wheels. I just do the 28 mil wheels. You can pick the color of the nipples you want, the color of the valve stem, pick what type of spokes you want, and they usually build up, for me, I mean, it depends on what type of riding you do. They might need to build them a little stronger if you're a heavier guy or if you smash stuff, but for me, I've been riding these wheels for like four years now almost, and they've been bulletproof. They're incredible, and they're inexpensive, they're lightweight, and they make your bike feel so much faster, so much zippier, it's crazy. If you're gonna throw money at your bike, wheels and tires. Well, tires first, then wheels. Tires makes the biggest change, right? Uh, geez, now I'm just yakking and talking about salt cycles the whole time. Anyway, salt cycles, 801. 943-8502. I send that number out to people every day. And the reason why is because those guys get stuff done fast. They're, they're amazing. In a world today where people can't get parts, you call Chris, he'll get you any part you need. He's got so much inventory. You would be shocked. Anything you need, I'd be shocked if he couldn't get it for you. In fact, my other buddy who has a bike shop, he ended up selling, getting him like 50 XT, Shimano XT chains. Just got them for him the next day because he couldn't get chains. So Chris got another bike shop, a bunch of chains. He's so good at like 
keeping his inventory good. Yeah, and like Robert Boyle said here, it looks like he got some yum yum wheels for his his uh, pivot trail for tonight. Is what he's saying. He did the bird spokes, dude. The bird spokes are insane. I shaved two pounds. Well, almost two pounds. It was like. A little over a pound and three quarters. So it was like a pound and seven eighths or something like that. Almost two pounds off of my Ibis XE. Just in wheels. Going from, and that's going from carbon wheels, from the uh, Ibis carbon wheels to Salt Cycles wheels. And I ended up doing, you know, DT Swiss 180 hubs, which is like some of the lightest hubs you can get. Um, I did the bird spokes. Yeah, the, the bike is just insane. Oh, it's insane. All right, let's hop back in the chat here. Um, F or uh, PHX, thank you for the $20 super chat, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Jason. Come down to Sedona next year. Dude, I need to get down. In fact, somebody emailed me, one of you guys, if you're on here, uh, a subscriber, a viewer of the channel, said, hey, I've got a condo down here. I've got an extra bedroom with your name on it. Drive down here, come hang out with us. He was gonna comp my whole, you know, take care of the whole housing arrangements and everything. Such a nice guy. I feel badly I can't remember his name right now. I have an email from him and he's like, get down here for Sedona. Here's the deal, is this year I have been training for a bike race for this Saturday. I think Sedona Mountain Bike Festival was just this last weekend, right? And so, um, yeah, I just, I've been pretty focused on this race that I'm doing. So, uh, next year, you know what? I can, I can give you a soft commitment to next year. Do they have one in the fall? For some reason, I thought they did it in the spring and the fall, or maybe it's just the spring that you go. I, I don't really know. Um, yeah, Jamie McDonald, the bird wheels, uh, and, and PHX, thank you for the $20 super chat. It's very generous of you. Um, <laughs> Jamie McDonald, those are the wheels that I'm talking about. Um, you know, the, the bird spoke, those are the wheels I have. You don't have to buy the actual bird spoke wheels, the bird wheels, you can just buy the bird spokes from Salt Cycles on their custom carbon rim. Anyway, call Salt Cycles. I will, in, after this video, I promise you I'm not gonna delete this video on accident like I did the stupid Specialized Stump Jumper live stream. I will not delete this one. I will make sure. It, anyway, I'll put in the description down there the link to Chris's, to Salt Cycle's phone number and you can call up and order your wheels. I'm telling you, it's the best money you can spend on your bike. Uh, Black Diamond MTV says, Salt Cycle's built his switchblade up in two days. I'm telling you, they have all these bikes. All over the country, people are saying, we can't get inventory, we can't get inventory. Specialized is the second largest pivot dealer in the world. Bonkers, right? Uh, they sell a lot of bikes. Um, okay, we were gonna answer somebody's question here. What was it? Yeah, how are you liking the Pike versus the Fox 34? I like both forks. It's just, if I'm gonna build a new bike, I like the Pike a little better. It's a little smoother off, like, on the smallest bits of bumps, not the real deep ones, but the smallest bits of bumps, I like it better, it's smoother. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, uh, Encopen Enco says, good luck on your bike race. What cat are you riding? I'm just riding the, uh, the, the age group category. So um, on, ro on road bikes, I'm a cat three, category three racer. And on mountain bikes, I just raced my age group. So 40 to 49 age group. And there are some fast dudes in those groups. So there's just open, which is pro, and then, you know, age groups down. But on the road bike, I, I'm, yeah, let's see here. Oh, okay, so Sedona Mountain Bike Festival is only in March, got it. Robert Boyle, good night, man. Thanks for uh, coming to the chat. I'm about to wrap it up here too. Um, Uh, Bill, what are you saying? You think you did what to catch up to the COVID delay? Um, yeah, I think we're about going to wrap it up, uh, you know, unless someone else has any other glaring questions. I'm planning on writing that element 
all season long, and I'm really excited about it. Um, it's got a great geometry. Easy to ride, great geometry. I really like it. Um, yeah, Bill, what, what were you saying, man? I didn't see what you were saying. Uh, anyway, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Um, I hope you guys had a good time in the chat tonight. We had a good turnout all night long. That was a lot of fun. Thank you for your support. Thanks for watching my videos. Um, otherwise, I'd just be uploading them to the YouTube Black Abyss, the black hole of YouTube. So I'm glad it's useful for some of you out there. If you're interested in doing a retreat, a, a guided tour, you know, four-day thing, come hang out with me and a big group of cool, like-minded individuals, uh, I think it would be a really, really fun, really neat experience, a, you know, a good It'd be a good good opportunity, I think. And you'd ride some just killer trails, incredible trails. So if you're interested in that, send me an email at mtbyumyum at gmail.com and I'll put you on the list for if and when it happens. Hello? Someone just knocked on my door. Hold on a sec. Sorry guys. Uh, well, we're wrapping it up anyway. So yeah, send me an email if you're interested in the guided tour. Uh, thank you for the support and for watching the, the live streams and the videos. It's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, and I, I read the chat. So if there's any questions in the chat that you have, um, I'll try to put it in my next video or if I missed it, we'll, we'll go from there. Um, yeah, that was kind of creepy. I, what happened is one of the neighbor kids, I think, just came and knocked on our doors and then <laughs> ran off. But I thought maybe it could be the FedEx guy because I got an email yesterday saying saying that uh, a bike from the pro's closet is coming. And the bike is the new Giant, the 2021 Giant Trance X. So I'm excited to ride that bike. Um, but yeah, that was kind of creepy. Someone just came and pounded on our door and ran off. And I thought maybe that's the FedEx guy. Dropping off the bike. No, I heard them. They're kids. Oh, they, heard... they were kids? You heard them? Yeah. They didn't leave anything? Nope. They just did a doorbell. They were, they were doorbell ditching us. They just doorbell ditching us. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, yeah, I thought it was maybe the pro's closet because they, they, I got an email from FedEx saying that it was going to be delivered today, but Marcy didn't see it all day today. And the stupid thing is you have to sign for it. So that's why I thought he was knocking and you had to sign for it anyway. Um, all right, that's it. That's it for tonight. Hope you guys had a good time. Hit the like button before you leave if you haven't already. That helps a lot. And uh, wish me luck in my race this weekend. Not going to be trying to stand on any podiums, but I'd like to PR the course and do my best. Um, and then I've got some really cool videos. In fact, if you want, I can hop on my calendar real quick and tell you what I've got coming up. What we got coming up is, I've got the Giant Trance X video coming up, the Ibis XC and True Grit race day video. It's gonna be kind of a blended, here's my new Ibis XC video with content from the race as well. I'm gonna do a Ripley versus XC video. I think that'd be kind of cool. Then I'm gonna do a video called The Real Reason I Sold My Ibis Ripley. I'm gonna fit that in there somewhere. And then I've got another video that I'm gonna be doing called, I don't know what to title it yet. It's gonna be like $8,000 mountain bike versus a $2,000 mountain bike or, or you know, something along those lines. It's kind of clickbaity, I know, but the reality is I just helped my next door neighbor. His son wanted to get on the Nika race team at the high school. And so we just found him a bike um, from a bike shop down the road here. He, we found him a little Marin. And it's a cool bike. It's a Marin, uh, I think it's called the Marin Hawk Hill or something like that. I can't remember what it's called. In any case, he's a size medium. And so, uh, and it was like a $2,000 bike, but it's cool. It has almost identical geometry to the Ibis Ripley. It's like a 66 and a half degree 
head tube angle and a 76 degree seat tube angle. 120 mil travel in the back and I think 120 or 130 in the front. In any case, uh, I helped them buy it and uh, um, and so I'm gonna take that bike out with Tyler and we'll take my Ripley, because the Ripley's sold, but I still have it here. The guy's not gonna pick it up until April 1st. That was the agreement. He can have my bike, but he has to wait till April 1st to get it, to give me some chances for the trails to dry out a little bit so I can film these couple of videos. I wanna do the Ibis, uh, the XC versus Ripley video. Anyway, um, but I thought it'd be really cool to do a $2,000 mountain bike versus a $8,000 mountain bike and see what the difference is. Now, the reality is, is I think we all know, I certainly know that there are huge diminishing returns beyond like that $4,500, $4,800, like, like the, the Rocky Mountain Element C50. You have like SLX brakes, I think mostly XT parts on the bike, a good dropper post, good, pretty good aluminum wheels, good suspension. You're getting Fox 34 and performance and DPS performance shock, which are great. And beyond that point, you start to get some diminished returns. But nerds like me and you, you know, we go and spend the money for them because we want to eke out every bit of performance and lightweight and advantage possible because one day we're 